Hi guys, it's Lexi, and today I'm coming at you guys with another conspiracy theory video. But this one kind of has a slight twist on it. It's not just about like celebrities or Mandela effects or anything like that. Today I really wanted to discuss some theories that will make you question your entire existence. These aren't necessarily like theories about pop culture or things like that. This is personally my favorite type of conspiracy theories because it's the one that really makes me think. Like sure, Justin Bieber may be like a reptilian creature, but it's even more interesting to think about like if you're even a real human being creature that's conscious. I don't know. But I just gathered a few of the ones that I thought were really interesting. Hopefully you learn a thing or two or you haven't heard all of these, but yeah, these are just the ones that I found really intriguing and that made me think. I think about these things a lot. Like, if I don't have an existential crisis, it's not really a day in my life. By the way, sorry if I sound really nasally. I've just had, like, bad allergies lately. But without further ado, I'm going to start with this conspiracy theories video. Hope you guys enjoy it, and hopefully you don't have too out of an existential crisis by the end of this video. So I'm just going to kind of start off with a bang, and this theory is called so solipsism, solipsism, solipsism. I've thought about this premise for a long time, but never knew the name of it. But basically, this theory kind of says that nothing exists but the individual's consciousness. So basically, nothing around you at all is real. It's only your own consciousness and what you're imagining. Don't click off yet. When you're first hearing this, this may sound kind of stupid. Like, there's other people around me. I've talked to them. I can touch that thing. I know it's there. Like, what do you mean it's not there? It's only in my head. Think about really elaborate dreams you've had that feel like real life when you're not aware that it's a dream. Who's to say that we're not in a super intricate dream right now and it's just our mind playing tricks on us? This theory kind of originated from people who took LSD. People on LSD saw insanely convincing hallucinations, things that they could even touch in front of them that seemed just as real as like your parents, your friend, the chair in front of you, the computer or device you're watching this on, but it wasn't real. The people on this drug, it felt so real to them, but like us knowing that they were on a hallucinogenic drug, we know that it's not real. But who's to say that we aren't experiencing something similar because there's no way to really verify if anything around you is real. It's really just what you are experiencing. Like for all you know, this could be a dream and every single person around you could be a character in your dream. So that's kind of something to think about. My friend Vanelli and I talk about this theory a lot. She like refuses to believe it. Each of us can only be sure of our own thoughts. There's no way to make sure that like anyone else around you is real. Don't think about this too much or you'll feel like you're going crazy. Like what's the point if nothing around me is real? But I don't know, just enjoy what's around you. But I just think it's really interesting. Your dreams are stimulating sensations and that's what your mind is doing when you experience things in life. You don't really know if parts of your brain are just simulating things or if it's actually happening for real. And this next theory is called phenomenalism and this kind of is similar to the one I just talked about. You ever wonder what happens behind your back because that's kind of what this relates to. I'm reading from this website so it says some philosophers known as phenomenalists believe that things only exist insofar as they are perceived. In other words if you just made a peanut butter sandwich it only exists as long as you're aware of its existence. That's like saying like Anything that you're not aware of that you're not actually seeing and experiencing doesn't exist So like if you look at a person they exist if you don't they're not really there And even if you think they're like out doing something that's just your own mind kind of playing tricks on you You probably heard the question posed that like if a tree falls in a forest, but no one hears it did it really fall? So the answer to that would be no So basically no perception no existence is that theory in a nutshell some philosophers just think if you're not perceiving something Then it's not existing at that moment. So if you're homesick from school school might not actually be existing that day. The next theory is called the Big Freeze and that's basically a scientific theory about the end of the world. A lot of people think it'll be like a Big Bang, kind of like how Earth started to some if they believe in the Big Bang theory, but the Big Freeze is kind of like the opposite of the Big Bang. This theory states that the universe has a fixed amount of energy in it and as this energy runs out, so the theory goes, the universe kind of slows down and starts wasting out and spending this energy. In other words, there's a slow loss of heat because heat is produced by the movement of energy particles and there's also a slowdown in movement and everything that's happening on the earth. So this theory is kind of like a broken clock or a phone dying. It's just kind of slowly going out. It's not just all of a sudden. If you believe in this, you think that the universe is just going to slow to an end rather than like halt. There's a quote by T.S. Eliot who believes in this. He said, this is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Eventually the world's gonna end and there's a whole bunch of theories about it. Shane Dawson did a video about that, but I hadn't heard this one before. What I had been taught or told before was just that eventually the sun would run out of energy and it would just explode and everything would end. You've probably heard of Plato if you've taken a psychology class, if you've taken like a world history class. 
He's a very famous philosopher and he had some pretty interesting theories about the world around him. He claimed that in addition to the world we're all familiar with that we're experiencing right now, there exists another world of perfect forms. So all the things that we see are merely shadows and imitations of the real thing. And by studying philosophy and science, we're hoping to catch kind of glimpses and looks into the real things themselves. And Plato also believes that everything around us is made of a single substance like atom stardust. When you think about it, we are not just like human beings in the universe, we're the universe and human beings. I have a shirt that says that, I know, I know, but I really am so into this sort of stuff. So according to this view, that means that like diamonds, gold, dogs, your shoes, your computer, all of those are made up of the exact same thing. Everything around you is the same substance, just arranged in different ways, different patterns. And this one really doesn't seem so far-fetched considering we're all kind of made up of the same thing, but yeah, I think Plato's a really cool guy. Like if I could have a dinner with him, I would be down, so. Plato, if time isn't real, I did a video before talking about presentism and how time is kind of an illusion. If time isn't real and you're still alive, Plato, hit me up, I'll get you a great vegan dinner. It'll be a date, it'll be cool. I didn't find a specific theory about this, but there's just the whole idea and premise of free will. There's the question that a lot of people kind of debate about whether we have free will or not. Some people believe that everything we do is predetermined. Every choice we make, every thought, like you coming to this video, that was already decided. You thinking you have a decision isn't real. Everything's already happened. You're just kind of going through the motions of it. This one kind of tripped me out because it made me think I didn't really have control. So like when you're at a crossroads in life, even though it seems like you're having such a difficult decision now, you've already made that decision. It's just, this is just a process that's already been determined to happen before you reach that decision. Okay, there is a name for this. It's kind of just called the dilemma of determinism if we're truly free agents making decisions. But then some people question, like, if we don't have free will, how did we evolve to this point? But what if that was also determined? I don't know. This one, I, I'm not sure where I stand on it because it kind of just, like, blows my mind thinking about it, whether we have free will in our decisions or not. I would like to hope that we do, but I guess there's no way for us to really know. So I think that that is going to be it for this video. I went through quite a few of the topics I think about a lot. I have a lot more. I am a huge kind of conspiracy believer. Not necessarily believer, but just I'm very open to them. I don't believe in like anything for sure. I like to explore and learn and gather more knowledge before I make any assumptions. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it got you thinking. You can leave any questions or discussions you want to have in the comments below. I would love to talk to you guys about everything. I don't know. I probably sound like a crazy conspiracy person, but I think they're very interesting and just fun and that is going to be it for this video. I hope that you liked it. Maybe give a thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you did. I will see you guys next week and that's going to be it. So yeah, bye.